Mike, have you seen ESPN's uh, shallow musings with Mike Leach and Jeremy Falzoni? I uh, heard about it. Uh, heard about it. Haven't really seen it. Um, uh, heard it's on every week, though, or something, <coughs> something, something like that. So. You'll have to check it out, but uh, I, what is it, just taken from this press conference or something? Yeah, and they'll put some highlights over it, and they have kind of a, your face up against the mountain or something. <clears throat> yeah, shoot, maybe they'll give me a cut of that, you know. So. Well, with a couple of early games, maybe you'll have to get up in time to watch game day. For... <clears throat> yeah, honestly, I usually don't. Um, I'm kind of locked into our game, you know. <clears throat> um, any games I would watch would be afterwards, would be like uh, after we're done playing. I, um, I watch football all week, and then <clears throat> I may back <coughs> go, go back and get film on a game I'm interested in. Uh, the Saturday of, I, I, I don't do much more than check scores. I just I kind of lock into our game. <clears throat> it's been reported that River Craycraft's career is, or college career is over at least. Uh, if that's true, it might be appropriate to kind of re reflect on his career and what it's meant as a four-year starter here. Uh, he's a great player. We don't comment on any injuries, but a great player, great part of our team, a uh, guy that came and <coughs> cont <coughs> contributed early in his career, which I thought, you know, uh, very impressive, and so we look forward to continuing to have him around. Has he been much of an example to, to younger players in your program as, as he's progressed throughout his career? Yeah, I think he has. You know, he's able to, to, <coughs> he's able to contribute early, and he's naturally a real hard worker, you know, and I think that example's rubbed off on others. If a player like that is sort of a team leader, for whatever reason, wasn't going to play in a game, is it still worth it and effective to, to have him around, bring him to Colorado, do, do stuff like that? Um, I, you know, I mean, he's a great player and still a part of our team. Coach, what problems do they present you guys on defense? Uh, I think they're good. They're really sound. You know, they do what they do, and they – they're really sound, and they, um, you know, they don't break their package. They're saying we can execute this longer uh, than you can, and uh, you know, if you get your licks in, we'll outlast you because we can execute it really well. So they're very, um, <clears throat> they've got kind of a unique defense, but they've got, uh, you know, their core philosophy is not going to change, and uh, you know, it's one based on execution and tackling, so it's very sound. From what you've seen so far, are they the most complete defense you guys will have seen up to this point? <coughs> uh, hard to say. Um, they execute it well. You know, they execute it real well. Um, they don't break out a bunch of bells and whistles and try to outsmart you. You know, they um, <coughs> line up good, uh, uh, line up good, and tackle well. What, what are some of their unique characteristics? The What's that? What, what are some of the unique things they do? Uh, they'll mix up the leverage of the secondary is probably the biggest thing. You know, maybe zone, maybe man, but they'll mix up the leverage. And the, the biggest way they try to disguise something is, is mess around with the leverage. You know, it may look like zone and it becomes man. It's, it's you know, it's subtle, but it'll be, you know, <clears throat> you know, still within their basic stuff. You know, in other words, they're not uh, – um, they're a group that's committed to being able to line up every time, which I think is pretty smart quality. Those DB blitzes they do, is, is that something Luke really has to be aware of, or does that not change what he's doing? kind of depends on the play. You know, our, um, we'll run our routes and let them unfold, uh, and then, you know, just uh, um, <clears throat> respond to it on the run, you know, and then as he goes through his reads and he sorts it. Do they look that much more talented or disciplined this year compared to previous years? A lot of them are the same guys as last year, but I think they're playing harder. They're playing more cohesive, and they're a year older. They have a lot of seniors, too. Uh, senior teams a lot of times, you know, play hard as they're getting to the end of their career, or, you know, the end of college.
Last year, did they look like a team that was maybe ready to take a, a step forward? Was probably better than its record. Yeah, well, I think I think they were all putting it together. You know, I think they're kind of putting a lot of things together, and um, <clears throat> you know, just kept getting better. I thought they got better throughout the year. How crucial has it been for your your special teams unit this season to really step up and and take leaps and bounds forward at pinning defenses or sorry offenses, you know, in their territory, and you know, Caleb and you know the, the kick returns that you guys have had this season. Being able to help out the offense and defense. <clears throat> well, I think we've gotten better, <clears throat> better at that too as time goes on. Um, the biggest thing I'd say about special teams is, with rare exception, it hasn't hurt us. And, you know, it, it, it generally helps and it hasn't hurt us. You know, there's a lot of special teams out there that, <clears throat> you know, the team will get hurt by it. And uh, uh, it's the biggest exchange yards, you know. Average, you know, on the average, it's the biggest exchange of yards on one play that's going to exist in a game. You know, the special teams plays, and um, <clears throat> you know, to to play, play uh, uh, to get some positive out of it's huge. Um, we haven't hurt ourselves with it really. Uh, I thought we struggled a little. I can't remember which game, but other than that, I think we've been on the upside of special teams, and I think that's been very important to our offense. <coughs> In our defense, you got one of those cough drop things you carry around. No. <laughs> he doesn't know. All right. What, uh, what, what did it feel apparent to you that the freshman lock on Caleb Fossum was somebody you wanted to get on the field in a variety of situations? Uh, pretty early. He worked really hard. I mean, just hustled really hard in everything he did. Um, <clears throat> hustled, ran around extremely hard, plays a number of special teams, and uh, backup receiver. So, I mean, <clears throat> you know, he's just one of those guys that's got an incredible motor and works really hard. <coughs> Coach, do you, do you worry about playing at altitude at all? Is that something you guys try and plan for? <clears throat> Not really. We kind of got some altitude, you know, what are we, 2,500 or something, and then, uh, you know, heck, some of these guys might have driven up uh, in the mountains, so okay, we'll allow that to take care of it. And plus, these guys aren't as high as Denver anyway. It's, you know, they're, they're <clears throat> so we'll just uh, take deeper breaths. You talked about River um, impacting early in his career. Isaiah Johnson, Matt, uh, talk about his progression. Uh, he came in as a as a highly recruit. <clears throat> and do you, do you feel like he's starting to gain more uh, awareness in the offense and, and figure out? <clears throat> I think he's way ahead of schedule as far as a true freshman. I mean, true freshman that play, period. I mean, that's always really impressive. And so I, <clears throat> I think that's uh, been impressive. I think the opportunity to have him learn behind Gabe was very good. I think um, if there wasn't a player of Gabe's quality ahead of him, uh, he would have, you know, you would have seen even more. But I think <clears throat> in the long run, it's better for him to, you know, have a real good example there to learn from. And, you know, <clears throat> <laughs> he's a big target, and he's hard to pull down. And he had the longest reception of the game, I believe. So he's doing good. Are there ways you guys are trying to get him into the offense more now in the second half of the season compared to the first half? <clears throat> uh, a little. I mean, if he's open, we throw it to him. You know, but I think <clears throat> he's more consistent about being where he's supposed to be. So then he's inclined to get the ball more. I mean, the more consistent you are, the more. Quarterback becomes aware of where you're going to be when, the better your chance of getting the ball. And I think he's improved on all that. So many quarterbacks that come out of California. Is, is Luke kind of a luxury in terms of being a cold weather quarterback? <clears throat> I don't know. We'll freeze him up plenty before they go out there. So they, he'll be used to it. You know? I mean, <clears throat> there's California guys all over the NFL, and there's nobody that doesn't play in cold weather in the NFL. I mean, <clears throat> I get a kick at all these guys, you know. We're all playing in San Diego or Miami. Yeah, Miami, that'd be a great place. You go go, yeah, you go up there to New England, go up there to Buffalo, go up there to New York Jets. Yeah, you only have to worry about warm weather, you know. So, um, And obviously, some of these guys aren't planning to play in the playoffs. So, um, 
You know, anybody that plays this game for any period of time eventually becomes a cold weather guy. But, but as a college guy, Luke, having grown up in Utah, do you think that makes it a little easier for him going to Boulder? Um, our, our weather's, you know, it's not like it's probably colder here this week than it is in Boulder, so they don't have any monopoly on weather, not with us. Some people, maybe. Coach, uh, after the game on uh, Saturday, Gabe kind of jokingly said that uh, the run game, as it was a luxury, is probably driving you insane that you have to run the ball and that somebody has to remind you. <coughs> is that the case? Does somebody have to come up and be like, hey, we should, like, you know, second and whatever? No, we want to get it to all those backs. We well, What we'd like... <clears throat> and I haven't had this up for a long time, and I told ESPN this, and I thought they might get back to me. They haven't. Um, at the running back position, I'd like to have the most yards because um, yards spend the, the, the same whether they're on the ground or in the air. And, uh, and it's not unusual for our running back position to have more yards than that position on any other team. So, like, if you play – Two running backs, you add up all the yards in the air on the ground with their two running backs. If you play three like we do, add up all the yards. And I'd like our number to be the biggest. I don't know if it is. My gut feeling is as though it would come down to us and Stanford. And uh, uh, I don't know that. But, um, you know, the thing <coughs> – um, so we, we want that – we, we want uh, – uh, we'd like to have the highest level of production from that position. And it's not unusual, um, you know, uh, I don't think, I don't know that we have since I've been here. Uh, at Texas Tech we used to, though. It did a lot of times it came down to us in Oklahoma State. But, uh, you know, what you ultimately want is production from the position. And our guys have caught the ball a lot, which, you know, there's, there's guys that have rushed for more yards than us, but they're, you know, when you add on the passing yards, uh, you know, in a lot of cases we'll come out ahead of guys that have rushed it more. So, I mean, the ultimate goal is production out of the position, and so that's what we need. And uh, and, uh, and right now we're getting pretty good production out of it. We're always trying to get more. Do you find it funny that so many people are talking about this because it's been stuck with the program for so long, area offense, area offense that all these national guys are Jumping up and down, going, oh my God, the run game. Yeah, they just, you know, they get to generalizations. Some of it's just out of the convenience of, uh, you know, you get some guy up there and he's got to get it all said in 20 seconds and you got to summarize the stuff and expedite your language and, you know, failure to do that, you're talking all the time. And so, you know, you end up uh, generalized as. You know, always this, always that. I mean, you know, you just roll on. I don't pay any attention to it, but we've always run the ball some, and we've always had production out of our backs uh, more this year than other times, and a lot of that has to do with our offensive line, and it's not just as simple as, well, we decided to run the ball. You don't just decide to run the ball, and all of a sudden it works. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, it's the Oh, I decided to run. Well, that's just that's just brilliant. We have the best offense in the country because we decided to run it. Well, what a brilliant uh, decision. I mean, you know, the, the whole thing's nuts. You try to get yards, you try to figure out what the scheme is, and you try to evaluate your personnel and your capabilities. And But I do take comfort knowing you're in and you're out. We have one of the best offenses in America, and everybody's trying to copy it. Do you take uh, on the same line question, do you think that maybe some defensive coordinators – have underestimated that side of the ball or that they just kind of stick with the stigma? That <clears throat> I, I actually don't think they have. Um, I actually don't think they have. I think, um, <clears throat> you know, if, if we have any production on that side of the bar, or, you know, doing that, or then <clears throat> I think the media perceives that they didn't estimate it, you know, or that they – Overlooked it. I don't think they overlooked it. I'd like to think we executed well, and you know, and I think everybody's trying to do something, accomplish something, and stop something. And as you battle away, you know, some of the things you're trying to do, you're successful at. Coach Gabe Marks broke a couple of records on Saturday: all-time Pac-12 receptions leader, and also all-time WSU reception yards. Are those kinds of things uh, in your mind at all? Are you aware of those going into a game when? Record could be broken. No, I knew he was close. Typically after the game, I know. Um, 
game we were really happy for him, got to ca uh, punctuate it with a touchdown. And then, you know, that's been a long time coming, and there's been a lot of, uh, and he'd be the first to tell you this, I mean, it's a great team award, a great team distinction, because there are, you know, different people that threw the ball, different people that ran out other routes to spring him open coverage-wise, different old linemen and backs blocking, and so it's all added up, and he's a great representative for that distinction, no question, and has worked extremely hard to get it. Any questions on the line for Coach Leach? Hey, Mike, it's Yeah. You mentioned that the, the offensive line has been integral in the run game progression this year. I mean, what is different about this offensive line and this group of guys that you maybe haven't had at Washington State before? Well, they're they're bigger. I mean, they're they're the biggest group we we've, we've had. I think <clears throat> they're bigger. They're uh, for the most part a year older, and I think. Offensive line's a position that needs to be choreographed uh, together in a fashion that no other position does. In other words, all five of them rely on what the other guy's doing at the same moment. And uh, so I think over time we've become better synchronized there, and then I think we've also become, um, <clears throat> as we've gotten uh, older, tougher, and more aggressive, and I think all that's helped the run game. I also think... Um, our back uh, position is very competitive. We play, we've got three of them, and those guys all know that uh, uh, we don't necessarily have to play them unless they're measuring up to the other two. The three backs that you had, I mean, did you did you kind of look talk to Miguel, uh, talk to Master and say, hey, we want three backs in this mold, each of which can do X, Y, and Z, or did it kind of come together as a happy confluence? And this meeting is scheduled to end in 10 minutes. Go ahead, Steph. Something about happy oh, something or other. Yeah, go ahead, Steph. Yeah, the three backs that you had, I mean, that you have currently, did you and Mastro look at your offense and what you guys want out of the run game and say, we want backs that can do, we want three backs that can do X, Y, Z, or did you just recruit the best backs that you could find and it somehow worked out that the three of them can complement each other so well? Uh, sort of both, but in our offense, and all three of them are required to do this, even though they have some distinctions between them. Um, <clears throat> but you do have to be able to rush the ball, catch the ball, and block. And if you can't do all three, you can't play in our offense. Um, to play running back in our offense, you basically have to do what they ask those guys to do on Sunday. Um, <clears throat> you have to be able to do all three skills. I mean, and, <clears throat> you know, I think that uh, – they all bring something different to the table. I think, you know, Wicks is uh, bigger and stronger. Uh, um, you know, uh, Morrow's real versatile, and then James is probably the most dynamic. <coughs> do you recall more? Do you recall Wicks looking over at you at one point on third and goal on Saturday and asking for the ball, asking you to run it, and then he scored that touchdown? Do you recall him doing that? Is that common for a player to kind of suggest, "Hey, let's do this"? Well, pretty common. He likes scoring, and he scored the most anyway. And he, um, for the most part, he's been our goal line back this year. So it's like <clears throat> it's probably a combination of him wanting to score, and then also knowing that. Hey, we're on the goal line. I mean, uh, give it to me and we'll finish this thing off. Because, so, you know, he's in that role and has been in that role for us, you know, most of the year. And some of it's because he's a big, solid, you know, guy and runs his feet pretty good and slams it in there. And how much of just the, the, the amount you've run, how much of that stems from Luke putting, putting you guys into run plays and him being willing to call runs? I think he's really good at selecting, you know, and a lot of our um, play calls um, <clears throat> have, a, a, you know, a couple plays attached, not just uh, not just two, but as many as five in some cases. And then um, <clears throat> he looks at the defense and tries to select what he feels is best. And how many, do you see similarities between Colorado's resurgence and this year's and the resurgence that Washington State had last year? Uh, yeah, I think so. And you see a lot of stuff in common offensively between the two teams as far as some of the plays. 
on the, the off the field stuff, I mean, just in terms of program building, did you see sort of parallels between what they did last year and what what they did this year and what you guys were able to do last year, having had guys in the program for a few years? Well, I think that's definitely helped them, you know, and I think they do a good job coaching there. I think that's definitely helped them. I don't, I don't know exactly what they did the off season, but, um, you know, I'm curious. Okay, and finally, I guess have you reached out to Donald Trump since I know you said you texted with his son? Have you reached out to him since then? Well, I'm sure he's got a lot of stuff to answer. We'll just go ahead and let him answer most of his mail and everything, you know. But I'll see him sometime in the future, I imagine, and uh, I look forward to it and uh, wish him the very best. Uh, on, uh, on behalf, I think, uh, everybody, I mean, uh, wish him the very best in, uh, in uh, helping our entire country. Okay, thanks, Mike. Thanks. Any other questions on the line for Coach? Okay, back in the room. Coach, uh, right now there's quite a few protests on college campuses that have broke out and high school campuses, and it, there's rumblings of uh, demonstrations that will be taking place this week here on campus. How do you look to disconnect, or are you going to take any stance whatsoever should those sorts of things come <coughs> to WSU's campus? And obviously there's going to be students that are drawing comparisons to you and your support for Donald Trump and things like that. You know, the name's going to be out there and a lot of students are going to be upset on that side of the, the viewpoint. Well, I quite honestly don't care because I respect their uh, opinion and their choice to select anybody that they want uh, to be their candidate. I mean, do we really live in a country where um, you can't freely support whoever you want. Is that, I mean, is that what you're suggesting? And is it their prerogative to ask for that? I, I, I don't think it is. And, um, you know, we've always had freedom of speech, always had uh, the right to protest, and I, I think that should be respected as long as it's uh, in an orderly fashion. And, um, but, uh, you know, I respect their opinion, and I'm certainly not going to hide from my opinion. Uh, and, and I shouldn't be asked to. And if, if I am asked to, I live in a different country than uh, we were all told that we grew up in. So. Anything else for Coach? Dan, question? Coach, yeah, I do have a fan question. But I was just curious, did you guys take any more time to reflect, celebrate the eight-game winning streak, being that that hasn't happened so, in over 80 years? Uh, no. And we're not going to until uh, um, <clears throat> We're aggressively pursue, pursuing a nine-game winning streak this week, so we'll see what happens after that. Is this team still kind of playing with a chip on its shoulder, do you feel like, and how is that helping you guys? I think we've been getting better each week. I think we've been improving, so. Coach, you talk about uh, the improved run game and uh, things like that, but protection-wise, I mean, you guys gave up 41 sacks last year and only 23 up until this point right now. Does any of that credit go to... Uh, Coach McGuire, is he doing anything differently to kind of get these guys to run and pass a lot much better than you guys ever have? I think <clears throat> I think the O-line, like I say, has improved. I think that's helped. I also think um, Luke does a better job of not getting caught with the ball. And then I think we've improved at receiver too. You know, so, um, you, you know, they're open at a more – I think everybody's improved. But I think our offensive line in particular deserves – you know, credit for him. During this eight-game winning streak, have you, have you seen a bump in recruiting, um, you know, talking to different uh, players that you know, maybe didn't respond back or weren't as interested in gaining more interest recruiting-wise? What's that? On the recruiting trail, have you, have you guys seen a spike in interest? Uh, is there... Uh, a little early to tell, probably. Probably. Um... <clears throat> You know, we've had pre <coughs> uh, pretty good uh, feedback, and the people have been pretty um, friendly and excited about our program. Um, I do think so. I think, I think yes, but, like, we'll know, we'll know more as we get into December. Do you feel like you guys are at um, where do you want to be as a program to, to all the up-and-coming high school recruits? 
No, uh, no, never. Constantly got to improve. Got to improve all the time. No, there's no arrival points. And, uh, you know, heck, even if you make the best there is, you try to be the best there ever was. So you just keep trying to move. Your reservation has been extended. Coach, uh, Kate was asked who mm -hmm. he models his, his game after. He said Steve Smith. Do you think that's a good comparison? Yeah, kind of. It kind of is. Um, I wouldn't have thought he'd think of him, but yeah, I would agree with that. I just he <clears throat> very competitive, hangs in there and battles away. You mentioned Conor McGregor too. Yeah, yeah, he's he's, he's got a little Conor McGregor in him. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, so maybe one of these days we'll see if he can take Conor McGregor. Uh, let's go back on the line one final time for Steph. Hey, Coach, what have you seen from the defense just in terms of their progress from year one to year two under Coach Grinch? Uh, I think <clears throat> I think we've gotten better and better. I think uh, some of the guys that have gotten older have improved because, you know, experience. And then um, <clears throat> right now, you know, uh, you got uh, kind of three levels on defense, the defensive front. Uh, the linebackers in the secondary, and I would say those three levels are um, playing together and, and operating uh, <coughs> in a real tightly synchronized fashion better than they have at any point that, since I've been here. Would you say, if you look back at your time at Washington State, you know, between the first two years and now these past two years, what do you think has made the biggest difference for you? Is it really the emergence of this defense and, and the run game? Or would you say there's something more to it than that? Uh, well, I think I think all of it. I think everything. We, there, I can't. <coughs> I can't think of any aspect uh, that we haven't improved in. I mean, um, you know, I mean, one of these days I'll run it a hundred percent of the time, so you guys can applaud the run game. And then the next game I'll throw it a hundred percent of the time, uh, and we'll all brag about how balanced we are. You know. Um, but uh, I, th I really, I think it's everything. I think uh, <clears throat> offensively, I'd say the biggest place we've improved is uh, offensive line. Um, uh, defensively, the biggest place we've <coughs> improved, I think, uh, biggest place we've improved defensively. I'd say the secondary. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, last chance for coach in the room. Student question of the week, uh, often hear about doing your job. So Grace, who's a kinesiology major, wanted to know what's the worst and best job you've ever had outside of coaching football? Worst and best. I had a lot of jobs. <coughs> uh, hmm. <coughs> okay, let's see. Worst. <coughs> uh, worst job. Worst job would be. Uh, I didn't mind painting. I worked for a contract painter. I didn't mind painting. Um, but there was a, a point in time where we were painting oil tanks and oil rigs. <clears throat> and so it's out there in a place called Oregon Basin, which is outside of Cody, Wyoming, and they produce a bunch of oil. And it's pretty good deer and rabbit country, but it's, you know, it'd be kind of as gorgeous as it is there because we're by Yellowstone. That'd be kind of ugly. So in the middle of summer, it'd be really hot. It'd be windy, too. And <clears throat> we'd have these paint sprayers. It could also be dangerous as you got up high. And... um but uh, <clears throat> so any of the black marks on the tanks, you know, the tar, you had to get that off. And you got it off with kerosene. And kerosene's a very thin liquid, thinner than water. <clears throat> so you'd reach up and be wiping these big smudges of tar and oil off. And that runs right down your arm, right into your armpits, you know. And I, <coughs> hell, I probably still have damage from that. And so then 
you know, you got kerosene all over your body, everything else, and you're burning from head to toe, and then spraying paint, and then gusts of winds are, are spraying more paint on you than's going on the tank, and uh, and it's hotter than hell out there, and you're you know you're wearing something to cover you up, and uh, uh, <clears throat> and then uh, you know if it weren't for the discomfort. Uh, and the treacherous nature of it, it would be boring besides, so you had monotony on that. And then, uh, so it, uh, it definitely had some of the greatest elements of torture that there was. And so then, um, but uh, yeah, that was, uh, I'd say that was a tough job. And then the other thing in high school, um, <clears throat> I'd work in motels some, because we had a, a high tourist uh, population that would come through and uh, working in the motels was more fun than you would think it was because uh, um, you know you're a high school kid sitting there working at the hotel at the desk so um, you feel a little bit official and then um, you know you're uh, as it got later you know at night or whatever your classmates would come over you could hang out a little bit at work you know There'd be bus tours coming in from somewhere and, you know, just uh, people from other parts of the country you'd get to kind of see and observe and you just see different types of people all the time as a flood of people came through and went out of the hotel. And then um, when it came to anything from uh, the maintenance of the hotel, which I did a lot of that, or, you know, the maids for the room, all that. I mean, they're your classmates. They're all your classmates. So it was... Uh, um, <clears throat> even though it uh, was work, it, it did have kind of a uh, summer camp quality a little bit. But, I mean, it was work, and you had to work, and, you know, you didn't want to piss them off. But um, it was, uh, yeah, it was good, uh, you know. And we'd pull a variety of stunts and things that uh, probably shouldn't be repeated. But it was, uh, it was a fun, it was a fun time. <laughs>